Hey there, welcome to the Eurostep, a Milwaukee Bucks podcast, proudly a part of the Blue Wire Podcast Network and the Eurostep Podcast Network. I'm joined as always by my wonderful co-host, Rohan Kadi, here to dive deep. Finally, this is the first time we've had a whole pod strictly about the Greek national team after a pair of exciting World Cup qualifiers we'll get into against Serbia and against Belgium. But first, more importantly, Rohan, how's it going? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Happy to be here. Um, you know what else is good, Ty? What's that? We have a new podcast on GSPN, don't we? Not just one. Not just two. No, two. two. It is two. It's, it's two. not more than two. Yeah. <laughs> so we've got Talk of the Tundra. We've got GSPN's Green Bay Packers podcast that just Ooh. launched, hosted by our guy Numak. You're going to expect to see two pods a week. Uh, after every game and previewing every game, uh, just check out that feed, Talk of the Tundra. And oh, yeah. also, we have Make Time for This, which is another uh, podcast uh, channel, a part of the GSPN family. We have welcomed uh, Adam McGee and Andrew Snyder's pod, movie podcast and TV show podcast, Captured on Celluloid, yep. that is now part of the GSPN family. And you'll see other stuff on that feed uh, occasionally. Uh, the streets are saying us. we need to do a super choose your fighter pod on that feed every so Ooh. often. Let's see. I don't know. We'll see. We have had some good ones that I think probably we talked enough that it could have been its own episode. <laughs> so we'll see about uh, about doing that. But very excited for both of those. Please go wherever you're listening slash watching this show. At least Talk of the Tundra is going to be dual cast and audio and video. And we're working on cruising and all the other shows within six and make time for this. So be sure to subscribe on YouTube or your podcast platform of choice. Actually, both. Just go ahead, double up, and please rate and review, especially as we get Talk of the Tundra, a brand new show started. It really helps us out if you could give a five-star rating and review on Apple or a five-star rating on Spotify. Tell everyone you've ever met, etc., etc. Help support your friends here at GSPN. Yeah, and especially with the Packers season coming up in uh, just about a week here, like a week and a half? Uh, yeah. th- 13 days. 13 Two days. Two weeks minus one day. Sure. Uh, but yeah, make sure you uh, are in tune for that because it's great stuff. Uh, there's already a few episodes up. Uh, Ty, you were on an episode with Numak. Yeah. Good times talking preseason. Yeah, thank God it's over. Um, preseason, it's fun watching football. I'm really excited for week one and, and to be a semi-regular fixture on that on that show. But, man, there's only so many Danny Etling snaps you can watch before it's like, okay, I've seen enough preseason now. You know, it's, it, it's fine. It was fine. Watching Jordan Love is interesting. Some of the defensive guys, you know, were fun to watch. Heflin, my guy. But... Ready for the real games, to say the least. Ready for Aaron Rodgers, at least on the field. Yeah, off the field. What was he on? He was on Joe Rogan, right? Yeah, Recently. Joe Rogan, and uh, and pardon my take, he's doing a whole circuit. Come on, talk of the Tundra, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, we'll have it. We'll sit down with A Rod for three hours. Three hours? That's a long time. Newmark, Newmark's got that. <laughs> Newmark could uh, easily. That would just be part one. Um, uh, but yeah, talk let's about? talk. Uh, let's yeah, let's talk actual Greek national team stuff. Yeah. So this past week, we saw the Greek national team take part in games that actually matter. Previously, we had seen uh, uh, sort of friendlies, two friendlies against Spain. Then we'd seen the Acropolis tournament, which I guess matters. Uh, but these games, these were two uh, FIBA World Cup qualifying games. This was one of the windows. I think it was window seven, I believe. I could be wrong. It's, it's, uh, it's complicated because they're broken into different groups and different rounds. But that sounds right. Yeah. It was it was a qualifying window, and this was a very important qualifying window as both teams had their star NBA players, and this is probably going to be the only time they see that for this uh, World Cup qualifier. Uh, so we had Greece, obviously, had Thanasis, they had Giannis, uh, they had just everyone that you would expect, and Team Serbia, they had Jokic, Nikola Jokic, reigning back-to-back MVP. So this was a titanic matchup. Uh, between Greece and Serbia. You had the last four NBA MVPs sharing the court and going at each other in games that meant something to their countries. Like Greece uh, was 3-1, and and after this game, they lost their 3-2 in qualifying. 
Serbia was one and three, moves to two and three. And these are two teams that are going to be competing against each other for that spot in the FIBA World Cup. So this was, it was a big game, wasn't it, Ty? It was a huge game. And I think more important for Serbia than it was Greece, because as you mentioned, there's been multiple qualifying windows already, and most of them without the NBA guys. So Greece fared better than Serbia in those other windows. As you mentioned, Greece came in three and one. Serbia came in one and three. So really not in, in great shape to qualify for the FIBA World Cup, despite, you know, really, I think being one of the premier basketball powerhouses in Europe, Serbia had some work to do and they played like it. I mean, this game, I think, was always going to be intense in Belgrade. So in, in Serbia, uh, really, you know, people always say the European crowd energy is different. I still need to see a game in person, but it did feel that way just watching. I mean, the and and especially Serbia, like, yeah. has been considered like the most intense out of like you. You mentioned European crowds are intense. Well, Serbia takes that to a whole new level. Yeah, they certainly did. I mean, you could feel it through the the stream, right? And you know, the the pressure was high. They were getting to watch Jokic versus Giannis, which everybody wanted to watch. And you know, the Greek slash Bucks contingent may have some thoughts about the officiating. I don't want to get too deep into that. I, I will say, I think Giannis and Jokic played at fairly similar levels. Giannis's box score ends up more impressive. He also played significantly more minutes. So in 40 minutes for Giannis, I, I thought Gilbert Arenas said he only plays 28 minutes, Rohan. What's going on here? Must be a misprint. No further comment on Gil. But oh, okay, yeah. Enough, I, I enough people have covered yeah, it. Enough people have covered let's it. Let's get it out of the way now. Gil... You're an idiot. Enough you're people. dumb. It's like if, you're, if we're just shouting it. things that are wrong, yeah. like by the way, like here, here's my take on Gilbert Arenas in a take that Gilbert Arenas would approve of. Gilbert Arenas, you were never good at basketball. <laughs> you were never actually worth anything on the basketball court. Uh, you, were you even an NBA player? Who knows? Who remembers you? Again, these are things that are clearly wrong. Yeah. I think I made a com- as compelling an argument as Gilbert Arenas did if I'm just saying things that are wrong, right? You know, some people have may have pointed out that Giannis accomplished more than Gil did in his entire career by the time he turned 25. He so did. maybe this would be like me saying, you know what, Bill Simmons? I don't think you know how to do podcasting. You should take some tips from me. A couple hundred thousand people tuning in per episode. I don't find that compelling. I don't know if you've seen our reviews. They're very good. So I'm just going to give you some tips on how to do this effectively. He, he, won, he won a championship. Cool. Gilbert Arenas, you won one playoff series. One. One. The most famous thing you're known for is bringing a gun to a locker room. <laughs> Maybe Who we should cares? stop. Maybe we should stop dissing Gil then. If that's that's his main accomplishment, this sounds like it's getting to a James Johnson level for us pretty quickly. I'm here. more scared of James Johnson than Gilbert Arenas. And Gilbert Arenas, you should take that offensively. Rohan, you have no chill. Um, okay. Giannis, anyway, plays 40, 40, a little over 40 minutes. Scores 40 points. Um Shoots 56% from the field. Very honest, 28.6% from three, but 71% from free throw, 10 for 14, plus eight assists, five rebounds, four fouls, three turnovers, two steals. So a jam-packed game for Giannis. Again, scores 40 and 40. Meanwhile, Nikola Jokic in 30, just 30 and a half minutes, scores 29. So basically matches the point per minute scoring, but he shoots 68.8% from the field. 69% from two, 66.7% from three. Surprisingly, Jokic is the worst free throw shooter in the game. Five for 10 for free throw, but adds eight rebounds, six assists, six turnovers, one steal. No fouls on Jokic, which again, you know, so people had some thoughts on the officiating. I think that's worth mentioning. Funny enough, both teams lost the superstar minutes. Jokic was minus four. Giannis was minus one. I think this game came down to the Serbian supporting cast was just much better than the Greek supporting cast. I I think, you know, you could say Giannis won. I think that's fair. I still think it's kind of a wash. I mean, Giannis was overall more productive, was able to play more, but Serbia won anyway. I think Jokic maybe plays more if Serbia doesn't hold a solid lead for a lot of this game. The fact that Greece pushed it into overtime, I thought was really impressive considering Serbia did shoot. I think you mentioned this before. uh, Before we started recording, 11 for 20 from three, 55%. 
Like they just weren't missing. Meanwhile, Greece makes 12 threes, but took 35 attempts. They shoot 34% from three. So I, I think you could argue the officiating wasn't going Greece's way. The shots falling surely were not. Serbia made some pretty ridiculous shots, including a Jokic turnaround over an extended Giannis that just like defies all logic. I think it was for he, he three. Just t- he took a one legged dirk fade from three. Yeah. And court. it went in. It's ridiculous. Like something something going on there for, for Serbia. You could tell they knew they really needed it. They played well. Um Yaramaz, I believe his name is, was had 15 points on three for four from both two and three. Lucic had 14 points. They they just had a lot of contributions. Meanwhile, Greece, outside of Tyler Dorsey and Thanasis, nobody scored more than eight points, which just needed more contribution from some of these other players to keep up with a well-rounded Serbia team. Yeah, and it's also important to mention that both teams lost important players in this game. Uh, Serbia lost specifically a Misic to a, it looked like a knee injury, ankle injury. Ankle, lower, ankle. He couldn't put any injury. any weight on the ankle. Yeah, it's actually NBA news too because OKC continued to dangle him, his rights and trade talks. Didn't Look, that stop them? I, I think, I mean, I think because nobody, nobody traded for him because he has all these ridiculous asks about playing time and he also wanted to be signed for $10 million a year, which no one has anymore. Save the Bulls, I guess, but... Yeah, and uh, so just unfortunate to see him go down. And Greece, uh, Kostas Atetokounmpo gets hurt, uh, which I think was very important because he was the primary Jokic defender for the beginning of the game. And uh, it, yeah. had, it had to go to Thanasis later on. Yeah. Thanasis had his moments. Jokic yeah, he, also had his moments. <laughs> yeah, I mean, certainly. I, I think Kostas is a little too small for Jokic. And Thanasis is, what, like three inches shorter than he is. So as strong and athletic as he is, it's just like... He's Jokic is going to be able to sur- survey the floor and get shots off whenever he wants. You know, I will gr- say Thanasis does have more experience guarding Jokic. Remember that uh, oh, Denver yeah. game where he started at center? Gr- the Greek it was like like Greek Day or something. Yeah, Greek night. Greek, Greek night, night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It did work. It's a good. That's a great point. Um, but Greece coming into the game without uh, Papianis, Yorgos Papianis, who has missed this entire thing with an injury suffered in camp, um, which is unfortunate because. You know, you're down their big center, right? Like they're really who I assume would have gotten the Jokic assignment at least to start. Costas doing a pretty good job. You know, had a really nice steal that led to a fast break, had some good moments. Kind of it looked like he pulled something in his thigh or hip area going up for a rebound. Doesn't return, doesn't play against Belgium either. So Greece really operating now with no true centers. I mean, you have Giannis, which helps. Then Asis a little bit plays there. But I think certainly, you know, Serbia continued to find more contributors after Misic went down. Greece, you, you could really tell, was missing the big men. Do we know what the injury to Costas is? All I've seen so far is not not expected to be that severe. I'll do another search here, but I have not seen that much come out yet. Okay, and hopefully uh, for Greece, we get to, we get to see Papianis play as Eurobasket starts to uh, get underway this week. But uh, yeah, it was uh, this game, like obviously mentioned my injury, but we still had Giannis. We still had Jokic going at it. And uh, like you mentioned, like Greece, had, Greece did a very good job to send this game into overtime because like you mentioned, they had a pretty sizable lead. Uh, but then Greece kept on chipping away, chipping away at it. And eventually it gets down to like a five point game or something. Thanasis hits a three. Jokic goes one of two at the line. Then you get Tyler Dorsey. Hitting a hitting a contested three that could have been called a foul. They could have called a foul on that yeah. three point attempt, which would have given Tyler Dorsey an opportunity to send the to put the put Greece up with a free throw. But he didn't. The shot falls anyway, and this team goes uh, like the game goes to overtime, and Serbia eventually overpowers Greece in OT. But it was it was an impressive showing from the Greek national team. Yeah, Costas, uh, according to. Basket News citing a Greek Basketball Federation report. It was a problem with his patellar tendon of the right leg. Mm. So that's all we really that's, know. He, he landed awkwardly going up for actually a really impressive rebound. So unfortunate for Costas. Hopefully not too serious, but I don't think we have any more info than that right now. Yeah, you don't want to mess around with knee injuries. Yeah, certainly not. Um, so hopefully he's able to – hopefully he's able to play again because I think – Overall, everyone, including Eugene uh, Hortsu, I follow at Eugene Horsu on Twitter. Horsutoglu is Eugene's full name, but the at is a little shorter. 
A-U-G-E-N-E-C-H-O-U-R-S-O-U, uh, our assistant producer here on the Eurostep, who has been sharing a lot of insight on the games and the Greek team, as of course, Eugene is Greek, lives in Greece, and is a huge fan of the team and has been watching them even closer than us. So make sure you're following Eugene. We'll have to have him back when we're breaking down the Eurobasket games. But yeah, hopefully nothing too serious for Costas. He has impressed pretty much everyone stepping in for Papianis and I think playing quite well. And even a report came out that the Bulls were interested in him. Maybe, you know, conveniently that came out after Giannis had his Bulls thing that we talked about last week. Uh, but certainly... Uh, he deserves an NBA shot. I think he has looked like an NBA player a lot during these these windows so far. No, he's looked he's looked really really like solid. He looks like he could be an NBA player. Uh, obviously, he has been one in the past, but like he's, he's showing solid skills, solid defensive skills. Uh, his verticality at the rim is impressive. His uh, his sense as a roller has been really really impressive. It's just I like. I keep saying impressive because I have been very, very impressed by what I've seen out of Kostas in these in these national team games, given the competition level isn't exactly the same. But like you're going up against Nikola Jokic, like he's second best player in the league, he's second best player in the world, certainly up there. Yeah, he has to. He's top four for sure. Yeah, he's not no, four, no doubt. So it's it's not like we're seeing him go up against like Alperen Sengun or someone like. Oh, that's still impressive too. Player. Yeah, that I is, mean, Shane Gibbs he, played, still played well. Yeah, I know. But if we're comparing like NBA players in international competition, like Shane yeah. Gibbs versus Jokic, I don't know what. I, I'm sorry. Albert it's not Shane like Gibbs. we're I seeing. Didn't, I didn't need to take a shot at you. It's not like we're seeing Costas put up ten and eight against Belgium and like, oh my yes. god, this is incredible. Yes. No offense to Belgium, who Greece dispatched in game two. We probably won't go too deep into that game. Uh, but before we get there, just the the Greece Serbia game again. Giannis, I think continues to look extremely comfortable like he gets he had a flop technical at one point because he went down too easy around a screen uh i think he had a carry at one point that probably was a carry it's just not something that would get called in the nba yeah because um, in the end it, to be clear like you don't there's no gather step rule in yeah fiba right so yeah he kind of moved while gathering and and they they've, they've whistled him for it but overall it's been pretty seamless Giannis. i think the three ball comes and goes just like it does in the NBA. The pull-up stuff from closer, though, continues to look really good. And I do still – we've talked about this a bunch. That and the free throws are more important to Giannis than the three. It's great when he hits threes. I think he's going to continue to take a few every game. Oftentimes for him, it almost seems more like like an arm punt kind of. Like I'm exhausted. No one else is doing anything. I'll just take a quick three. And sometimes they go in, which is great. But 70% from free throw in this game in Serbia, which was awesome. Uh, and Especially because he started like 9 of 9 or something. I think like it that. was 8 of 8 before he missed two in a row. Oh, okay. And then and then kind of split from there. But still, yeah, certainly a great start for him shooting shooting the free throws. Uh, but the, the mid-range pull-ups have been really exciting. Like obviously we knew we were going to see a lot of plays where – Giannis gets to the rim and dunks easily. This happens in the NBA too. Of course, it was going to happen against, you know, a more physical game, but maybe less athletic competition overall than than he sees in the NBA. So those plays are awesome too. It's really fun to watch Giannis dunk on people. But the skill stuff has been even more encouraging for me. And not that we ever had a question, but like, it's just good to see Giannis continue to refine his game. Are you telling me that he actually improves, Ty? <laughs> Is is that what you're trying to tell me? Uh, I believe I am. After we put up 40 and 40 minutes against Serbia, um, I do have one more thought in this game. But do you have anything else on on Giannis or any of your own thoughts on on Serbia Greece? Uh, I just thought it was a like it was a very entertaining game. Yeah. For that, like super super intense. Like obviously we've talked about this up top, but it was it was in Serbia. It was. It's just good to see these guys show out in this sort of atmosphere. This because it's different. It's different than the NBA. You play with a different intensity. You play with a different attitude. It's just. It's great basketball. Yeah, it really is. So my like, I guess, analytic or strategic look at this game, Greece's success in FIBA World Cup should they qualify, and again, they're going to need to win some games without Giannis in November and in February. They are in Anthanasis. Anthanasis. Uh, and maybe the other Khaled Zykis and Tyler Dorsey, who is in the NBA as well uh, on a two-way. The Mavs two-way. Yeah, Mavs two-way. Looks like an interesting player. 
Um, yeah. But Greece is second in their group, four and two. Latvia is five and one. Belgium and Serbia both three and three. Turkey two and four. Great Britain one and five. So there are four more games remaining for all the teams spread out across two windows, just like this one. Greece does not have easy games. I believe they play Belgium, Latvia, maybe. No, I think they play Belgium, Latvia, Turkey, and Serbia. Or maybe they play one of those teams twice. I know they do not play Great Britain, which is unfortunate, as Great Britain is the weakest team in the group. So Greece is going to need to win some of these games without the NBA guys. And potentially, I think potentially some other league guys as well. I don't know exactly how. I, you know, I know it's easier for the European players to play when they're doing these competitions, but I'm not sure how much easier, right? We'll see. Uh, but it'll certainly be worth following, at least from afar, in November and February to make sure that Greece does qualify for the FIBA World Cup. If they do, we'll get to see Giannis and company about a year from now in August of 2023 playing another competition, which would be really fun. Yeah, and then potentially see them uh, the year after in the Olympics. Yeah, that's true. A lot of it, the the Bucks fans who get nervous about international competition not going to be excited about some of this, but we certainly three, hope three straight years. <laughs> we certainly hope that uh, Giannis qualifies and is able to play. Um, I mean, if they win Eurobasket, they're in the Olympics. Yeah, and there's other ways to qualify too. Right? Yes, there yeah. are, but like that's straight up. Yeah, um, get to Eurobasket in a second, but I think Greece's success with. With Giannis in a FIBA World Cup, in the Olympics, in Eurobasket, which is coming up this week already, it's going to come down to the guard play. I, I think we've seen against great teams, against not great teams, and this is kind of true for the Bucks against most teams to an extent as well. Giannis is going to be honest. I mean, he had 40 points in 40 minutes, eight rebounds, five assists, everything else. The guy's a wrecking ball. I basically played his minutes to a draw. I think probably would have won his minutes if they had more consistent play from Nick Kalathis, your your sworn enemy who did not play well whatsoever. Kalathis was two for eight from the field, one for five from two. He did have eight assists, but he also had five turnovers. Just took some really bad shots, was having that issue where he doesn't pass to Giannis enough. Tyler Dorsey, on the other hand, I think played pretty well, made that clutch shot, had 16 points, did take him 14 shots though, but four for 10 from deep, three assists, three turnovers. We've seen some playmaking from Dorsey, not a ton. I'd like to see a little bit more, but certainly he's more of a two guard than a point. But I mean, if Kalitas plays this bad, they're going to have a lot of trouble beating the Serbias and, you know, Slovenias and other great teams here in Europe. They're going to need better guard play. There's no two ways about it. As great as Giannis is, I, I think that would that could hold Greece back. So it really going to be fascinating to watch, you know, as they get started in these Eurobasket, their group is not that strong. But really, the next time they play a stronger team, how Dorsey and Kalathis play, because I do think Greece's fortunes probably come down to those two guys. Plus getting the centers healthy, that'll help too. But I think the guard play is going to be crucial here, just like it always is on teams with Giannis. Especially like in European style basketball where playmaking is so, so, so important. You mentioned like the Slovenias, the Serbias of the world. Their best players are elite playmakers. Like Luka and Jokic are elite playmakers. You need to be able to have someone who can be a solid playmaker. Like, obviously, Giannis can be that if he needs to be. But he's the one who should be finishing, not the one playmaking in this situation. Uh, because, uh, obviously, like he's the best player. He's their best finisher. Like It's not like with Slovenia or Serbia. Let's take Serbia, for instance. Like Serbia's supporting cast was absolutely great in this game because they were hitting their shots. Greece, you cannot count on every one of their like secondary tertiary players to make their shots like going 11 of 20 from three 55 percent from three for uh serbia in this game you just it's ridiculous because you can't help off Jokic, but you also can't contest the shooters as well that's what makes Jokic such a great player and you you saw it on full display like you need to be able to have someone who can pull gravity towards a defense greece just doesn't have that type of guy right now like especially when kalathis is playing like this like Ideally, ideally, you do have these players. Ideally, like Tyler Dorsey, Slukas, Kalathis, uh, Papa Nikola, these type of guys, like they uh, theoretically can be good spacers, be good floor spacers for Giannis and be good playmakers. They just weren't in this game. So, like, you, you were spot on. You need to get the guard play up. You need to be able to see, like, competent playmaking, competent decision making, good shot IQ. That's how Greece is going to succeed. 
Yeah, I mean, you look at – even you mentioned Luka and Jokic, but like Misic was three for four from the field with three assists in 12 minutes before he went down. Like uh, for Slovenia's side, and they somehow lost to Germany, which is pretty surprising. But, you know, they have a guy, even though he may be NBA washed, in Goran Dragic, who has, I believe, been Eurobasket MVP before. And he and Luka are one hell of a one-two punch. So, They're the reigning, reigning champs. Yeah, and reigning champs. It'll be fun to watch them play this year. So – you know, Greece just needs Kalaitis and Dorsey to be more consistent. I think Dorsey has been pretty good overall. Not not great, but I think, you know, Kalaitis was seen coming in as kind of that guy and just was not against Serbia. Still had eight assists and still is, like, a wonderful playmaker. There's several plays every game where he sets up Giannis, Thanasis, Kostas, etc. in great positions to score. Just has to be more consistent. Just way too many wasted possessions against Serbia. And I think it really did cost the Greek team in that game. Uh, Slokas wasn't effective one for four in 22 minutes. Uh, Papa Nikolaou has really had some moments, but again, eight points in 38 minutes for him just was not that productive offensively. You know, Thanasis really did. I mean, the the three, the two threes he made, they might have both been on possessions where he first missed a three and then the ball got back to him. But still, hey, he made it though. Shit, he made still, it. still a productive possession. Still 40% shoots, from three. Yeah, 100% from two, three for three there, had an assist, five fouls, which is very Thanasis, but also five rebounds, four of them offensive. So really crashing the glass against He Serbia. was great. He was yeah. really, really good. His like, energy he helped keep them it. in the game. Exactly. Like he he hit a clutch three within the last two minutes to help send it to overtime. Yeah. Like I, it was a catch and shoot wing three, I think. Yeah. And like he he was solid. You like you can't complain about his performance. Like he was the third leading scorer for the Greek national team in this game. Yeah. And he followed it up by I think being fifth top five scorer against Belgium again in a game that simply not as contested or or as imp- I mean all games are important now, but Greece beats Belgium. 85 to 68. Um, Giannis only needs to log 27 minutes in this one. 26 points, seven rebounds, one assist, two turnovers, two steals for the Greek freak. They actually only win his minutes by six. The Nasus plus 18 tied for team high with Tyler Dorsey. Uh, TA again was one for two from deep, continues to shoot the ball relatively well. Uh, but Kalaitis played much better. Tyler Dorsey was really good, four for 11 from the field. Uh, scored 22 points, so second only to Giannis for the second straight game. Tyler Dorsey really kind of is scoring, making a big impact here. But Belgium, you know, despite playing well in the group stages so far, just does not have the guys to hang with Giannis. Quite clear. And we saw this. Who, who was the other game? Was it in – I mean, really no teams that have played him. We saw them play a weaker opponent in Acropolis too, no? Georgia? No, Giannis didn't play against Georgia. Who was the first team they played? Now oh, I don't shoot. remember. It was Turkey? No, not Turkey. No, because I think Turkey's no. pretty good too. Yeah. Maybe it was. No, they played Turkey without him too. Who else did they play? They they did win the Acropolis tournament, which is great. Yeah. Who was the first game against? Why can't I remember? Poland. 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 That's who. I think Belgium is better than Poland. I think Belgium has some some better players. But kind of the same energy of just like there's no one on those teams who's fit to be same league as Giannis, quite literally. Um, Literally, because there's no NBA players. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which it doesn't mean that there's no NBA quality players, but there's no one who can hang with Giannis on those teams. Exactly. Which it's tough to do for NBA guys, much less guys who aren't even in the league. Yeah. Uh, So pretty, pretty much the expected result there. But I remember in our preview pod with Eugene, he said, look, Greece... Maybe better than a lot of teams they play, but they really need to handle business. So nice to see, you know, no drama here. They beat Belgium. They secure the win, go one and one this window, put themselves in a good spot to qualify for the 2023 FIBA World Cup, which is all you can ask for. Yeah, exactly. Like, sure, you lose that game against Serbia, but that's a tough game. Serbia needed to win it. Sometimes you just get outplayed. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I do think... Serbia needing to win it was – they played like it. They, they played like yeah. everything was on the line and honestly could not believe Greece got it to overtime. From there, they, I think they just were out of gas, which makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it was it was all spent trying to get the game into overtime, which would have been so good if they actually called that foul. But there's there's no chance they're calling that shooting foul in Serbia. There's yeah, no not shot. there. Not there. 
Like exactly. the rest might actually be scared of what's going to happen to them after. <laughs> I don't think I'm not. I'm not even taking that in jest. Like, yeah, no, seriously. I I don't think I don't think you are either. Uh, but uh, obviously, after these games, like the next games are Eurobasket. Eurobasket is starting up this week. It starts on uh, Thursday, September first, uh, for the entire thing. Greece does not play their first game until Friday, September second. But this is it, Ty. This is this is Eurobasket. This yeah. is where it's put up or shut up time. Yes. So on that same theme of Eugene's idea that Greece just needs to take care of business, they just need to continue doing that. So how it works is there are how many groups? Six? No, four. Just four groups of Eurobasket? Four Four groups of six. That's where I got six from. So really, I mean, you're talking about 24 teams. There are a lot of teams who are not in the upper tier. Obviously, that's how tiers work. But, you know, for example, Serbia's group is them, Poland, the Netherlands, Israel, Finland, and Czech Republic. So Finland's played well in this window. I think Czech has played okay, Czech Republic, but Serbia clearly a cut above the other teams. Same for Greece, who's in a group with Croatia, who's had some moments, Estonia, Great Britain, Italy, and Ukraine. So both of those teams should finish first in this group stage before we get to the knockout phase. If they do, they would then meet in the finals, which would be pretty epic. The other groups are Group A, Belgium, Bulgaria, Georgia, Montenegro, Spain, and Turkey. Kind of like Turkey's chances in that group after Spain has not looked that great so far, but we'll see. And then Group B is Bosnia and Herzegovina, France, Germany, Hungary, Lithuania, Slovenia. That's going to be a fun group. Germany has played well. France is good. Slovenia is good. Gobert versus Luka and Drogic. That'll be a fun one to watch. And Wemby's playing oh, did you too, see, right? Did you see Nurkic's dunk yesterday? No, I didn't. From Bosnia? Oh, Yo, man. He absolutely poster to do. Yeah, I don't know. Group B seems a little unfairly loaded. Like, there's going to be teams that don't make it out of Group B, and that's unfortunate. Yeah. I mean, two teams aren't going to make it out. Oh, I, mean, I guess. If I had to bet right now, it's probably Hungary. Hungary and Lithuania. And Lithuania. Yeah. So, I guess the four. But you never know. I mean... If one of those top four could slide out, and they probably shouldn't. Like, I think if you put any of Bosnia and Herzegovina, France, Germany, Slovenia, maybe not Germany, but I, I actually think any of those four would easily make it out of one of the other groups. Oh, yeah, for sure. But but it's going gonna, it's gonna to be uh, pretty simple. Uh, you would hope that Greece and Serbia take care of business in their respective groups because, let's be honest, those two are probably like the – Two favorites? Them or Slovenia. Reigning Slovenia, champ Slovenia, Slovenia. With, with Luka. I'm sure they're up Those there. Those are the top three for sure. Yeah. France, obviously. Is France is up the there. Four. Yeah, so, like those are the top four and two of them are in the same group. The complicating factor, I think, will be back-to-back. So here is the Greek schedule. We have not seen Giannis play in a back-to-back yet or even – we haven't seen him play with one day off either, right? The Acropolis tournament, he didn't play either of the last two games – Trying to think in the friendlies if he did, but I, I don't. I don't think so. He the Spain didn't, he only games. One of those. The Spain games were. Yeah, he didn't play the second one, did he? No, he only played in the first one. Yeah, so I think pretty unlikely he plays either of these back to backs. I think Greece should be able to take care of business anyway. But Friday, September second, they play Croatia. All games on ESPN Plus. So everyone, I I might just draft a forum response. People who ask me on Twitter, I'm not upset. I get it. Everyone wants to watch Giannis. Now, Google does exist, but all games on ESPN Plus, so it's really simple. Friday, September 2, Croatia, 9.50 a.m. I'll do all times in Central. Uh, Then the next day, Saturday afternoon versus Italy at 2.50 p.m. Monday, September 5th, they take on Great Britain again at 9.50. Tuesday, September 6th, they take on Ukraine at 9.50. And then Thursday, September 8th, Greece takes on Estonia at 9.50 a.m. So, I would imagine Giannis probably plays in three of these games, if I had to guess. Friday against Croatia, Monday against Great Britain, and Thursday against Estonia to get a couple days off between each game. That, I think, makes the most sense, but we'll see what he, the Bucks coaches over there, and the Greek team elects to do. Yeah, all of these games are in Italy as well. Yeah, uh, they, they are in Milan every game, so safe bet Bud will be there as he continues his epic basketball journey slash vacation just, like he should have just joined the coaching staff man like doesn't, he doesn't Oppenheimer. want to work that much though he doesn't have to get he's up early. there anyway yeah but he probably rolls up a little late you know gets a little latte does bud oh, stuff come on this is bud we're talking about i don't know man i think bud might enjoy sleeping in bud, over in italy like 
bleeds basketball. He does. He does. Like, he's there. He's watching every game. He's taking in Georgia Turkey games or Georgia Poland games. Maybe that's why. Maybe Mamu's maybe playing. maybe he didn't want to discriminate against Mamu. Oh, he should just coach Georgia, then. No, because he, he certainly doesn't want to discriminate against Giannis. I mean, let's let's be logical here. Well, you got you got Oppenheimer on the Greece national team, so it's fine. I don't think I don't know if that's an equal fit. I think he's just enjoying himself. Doesn't have all the rigor of actually being on the staff out there. Um, it, it, it's probably more fun for him to like shadow than it is to actually coach the team anyway. Yeah, and he'll probably like give his thoughts to the coach oh, yeah. anyway. And to Giannis, I'm sure. Yeah, but. Uh, no, all of these games are in Italy, uh, at least the, for the group stage. For the group but, stage, yeah. Yeah, they're all in Italy. Uh, we, we do think both, like, Greece Greece should come first. Do you think there's any chance they don't come first? No, I think they that could. Giannis might not play? I think they could drop a game, right? I think they could. In one of the games, Giannis doesn't play. If he plays three of the games, and maybe he plays more. I mean, maybe he takes these games more seriously. He did play in both of the World Cup qualifiers. All of the games he's skipped or sat out with and Greece always does an in, in, injury designation that scares Bucks fans for some reason. Um, but all of those games were friendlies. So they counted for nothing. He has not yet missed a game that counts. It's basically just the two Correct. World Cup qualifiers, but that's all that he's played both. So we'll see. Maybe he does end up playing in more than we expect. But I think even if Greece loses a game, which I think would be f- probably expected just because it's hard to win all those games if Giannis doesn't play two of them. I mean, they'd be, what, four and one? So they to not finish first, they would need to lose to another team that also goes four and one or have a team go five and oh. And I just feel like the rest of these teams should be competitive enough that they split a few games. So like... Competitive if, enough in the sense like they're at the same level. Correct. Yeah, yeah. So I think Greece is pretty high up. I think the other five teams in their group are somewhat similar. Like I think GB is not very good. Croatia maybe could, could test them. Italy... I mean, now, though, without Danilo Gallinari for the rest of the summer. Yeah, after unfortunate. He, is that MCL? I don't know. I did not see it. He's expected to be back history. early in the NBA season, but could, probably will miss camp with Boston, too. Uh, injured himself. Not supposed to be super serious, but it, it is. Uh, see no, that meniscus. Of his knee? Meniscus. It's a meniscus. That's what it is. Yeah. It didn't you damage the. Though? No, I didn't. Oh, it's like someone took a picture, like took a frame of when it yeah. like, actually exploded. It's wild. I don't, I don't like watching those. Um, but yeah, so Italy, unfortunately hosting this group, but without Gallo, which is a big blow to, to Italy. Um, they still have, what's that shooter? I always forget his name. He came over for a couple years to the NBA. I don't know. He'll have to be their best player without Gallo though. But yeah, I think, I think even if Greece goes four and one, which they should go five and oh, I think they are just better. I still think they would win the group and then be first, which is a big deal. I think you do certainly want that to avoid uh, Serbia, at least, until a potential championship, which would be epic. Uh, who's on this team? Who's on Italy's team? I'm looking it up right now. Uh, N- Nico Mannion? Yeah, no, 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 that's not who I'm thinking of. He's 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 here right now, too, but... Is he still in the league? Uh, maybe he's not anymore, actually. Oh, my God, Lu- to- Luigi Dottome <laughs> is not who I was thinking of, but he used to play... Uh, yeah. In the NBA for the Knicks, Melly Nicola Melly. Yes, Nicolo Melly. Yeah, but, I mean they still got some players for sure. But yeah, I think that's I that's most of the countries, and Croatia has some pretty good players as well. But it's just the Greeks. The Greek teams should be able to take care of business. You would hope. You would think. So, assuming that Greece wins uh, Group C, uh, they would then play on. If, like for the knockout stage, they would play the fourth team in Group D, which was Serbia's group. And assuming Serbia wins that group, that's not going to be Serbia. Um, it could be. Let's see, who could it be? Let's let me make a prediction. Maybe Czech Republic, uh, Netherlands, maybe for the fourth team in the group. Yeah, I I say Finland comes second. Yeah, Finland's played third. well. I mean, they got uh, they got marketing. Yeah, the the finisher. Yeah. Did you see Jordan Clarkson balling out for the Philippines? Oh Different yeah. competition, oh. but Jordan Clarkson is is getting buckets. I think they're also he's throwing, he's throwing full court oops to Kai Soto. It's that's awesome. Yeah, it is. 
Um, uh, yeah, I could see. I mean, Poland's played not that well. Yeah. Yeah, I think it'll probably be Serbia, Finland, Czech Republic, and then who gets out from there. I think Netherlands is a good bet. Yeah, probably the Netherlands. Either way, it's not going to be anyone super impressive, and Greece should win that game. Yeah. Uh, theoretically. So then, who would they play next? They would play... They would play the winner of B2 versus A3. So that's where you sort of get into... Uh, you could potentially play like a team that's decent. Like B2, we talked about B2. That could be... That's probably that going to be their first real test. Could be Slovenia. It yeah. really could be Slovenia. Because if you assume like France or Slovenia is 1-2, yeah. like the other one's going to be 2. It's likely Slovenia, France, A3. That That's who B2 has to beat A3, you said? Yeah. So that... That could be Mamu. It could be. Spain so and Turkey feel like the be, top so two in be Group B2. A. Yeah, it's probably going to be B. Hey, you never know. I'm not I'm not putting anything out of Mamu's realm of accomplishment. But yeah, I think France or Slovenia in the second round would be would be quite a matchup. Yeah, and you could you could see Greece go out in that yeah. Oh, yeah. game. Yeah, 100%. Because you're going to be playing against like super, super talented people. Like we mentioned, Slovenia is going to have like they're the reigning champs. They're going to have Dragic. They're going to have Luca. France is going to have Gobert. They have Fournier. Who else? Who else do they have? Uh, Wembyana, right? Is he playing for them? I thought he was. Could be wrong. Uh, I mean, fair enough. If he is, that's ridiculous. <laughs> Let me look. Let's see. Um, the most recent game they lost to Bosnia. Yeah, uh, that's where. Uh, that's where. Uh, What's his Nurkic. name? Nurkic had that amazing dunk because he, he didn't dunk on Gobert. I know that. Who is John, John Roberson? 18 in that game. Not sure who that is. Who? Uh, oh, they have Gershon Yabaselli. Oh, maybe they don't have Wemby. Maybe that's next time. I thought they did have him, but I'm not seeing him. At least he didn't play in that game. But France has Gobert, uh, TLC, Timothy Luawu Cabarro, Evan Fournier, uh, Vincent Poire, a lot of Celtics are former Celtics. Yeah. Gershon Yabaselli is the guy. I said he had 16 against Bosnia. Elliot oh, Kobo. Oh yeah, yeah. They got some like this. That's a very very talented team. France is well coached. They all these players have been around the team for a while now. It's going to be it'll be a tough matchup for sure. Like that's that's the first real real test for Team Greece. Yeah, it should be that that second game of the knockout stage. You would hope that they get through the knockout games, you know, at least four and one, and then they should be able to get through that first round pretty easily as well. Yes. Oh, they, then, France also has Teo Maladon. Oh wow, yeah. So a lot of a lot of players. Team. It is. That is a stack team for sure. Uh, but we know we know Giannis loves to go at Gobert. So, and who can blame him? <laughs> Who can blame them for sure? Um, do we have anything else we need to mention about Eurobasket? Um, I don't think so. I'm excited for it to start, quite honestly. Yeah. Greece plays their first game on Friday, as we mentioned, against who is it? Uh, Friday's game is against Croatia. So Croatia. The, the first two games are probably the best two, which is unfortunate. So I think, yeah, if they, if they start out 2-0, that's really impressive. But versus Croatia versus Italy on the back-to-back. So if Giannis doesn't play both... That Italy game, I'd probably pencil as their most likely loss. But the Croatia game should be fun. That's a team that has Mario Hazonia, Dragan Bender, old friend, Ivica Zubac, and Bojan Bogdanovic. So that is – shouldn't underrate Croatia. Squad. That's a That will be a really squad. good – that's probably the best game of the group no matter what. Or the, the, the oh, group for stage sure. for Greece, I should say. Yeah. The best game overall is going to be Slovenia-France, which should be a blast. Hmm. Uh, but – I don't. I'd still take Giannis uh, and the Greek team over that team. Who the hell sure. is on Finland? That that Croatia team lost by two to Finland. Markinen's a beast, man. Oh yeah, Markinen. But still, is it the only only guy we recognize? Yeah, he had I mean, nineteen. He's, he's the only Finnish Finnish born player to play in the league. In oh, that's true. Yeah, they literally they just have a bunch of just Finnish guys balling out. Alexander Madsen had ten. Sasu Salen had fourteen. Yeah, they had a bunch of guys with around eight, seven. Shout out to Finland. That's fun. Yeah, just a well, well put together team. And I saw Sweden beat somebody who's, I think Sweden might have beat France. What? No, maybe not. Germany did. No, Germany beat Slovenia. 
Now it's it's hard for me to keep track of everything. These teams are, these teams are losing. That's all I'm saying. Like, and they're yeah. playing their guys. Like I don't think Luca's missed a game. I don't think Gobert's missed a game. No, Dragic did not look great in the loss to Germany. That's for sure. No, I, I lied. Lot. Sweden beat Israel, which is less impressive. <laughs> they hung in with Slovenia, though. Oh, that was in November 21. I'm all over the place now. I'm getting That's lost. Okay. Yeah. It's okay. We're getting lost in the sauce. This is not our area no, of expertise. I, I was right. They about. did hang with Slovenia. Sorry. It was July 3rd. They played them again. It was 84-81. I thought I, thought I remembered seeing that. So they were really close. It was in Stockholm, but they almost beat Slovenia. Okay. Go off. Go but, off, Sweden. But then they only scored 50 points in a 17-point loss to Germany. So maybe oh no, up, the ups and downs for Team Sweden this year. Yeah, for sure. There's there's some home cooking, I'm sure, against Slovenia. Yeah. But they did. They beat Israel in Israel. So that should count for something. Sure. Uh, do we have any other Sweden takes, Ty? Uh, no. They got, they got blown out by Finland in Finland in June. I'm noticing a trend here with all the home teams winning. Oh, I think they beat Slovenia without Slovenia's guys because that was July 3rd. So I don't know if they were playing yet. So that might be a lot of the reason there. That was the last window. Dragic was there. Oh, Luka was there oh. too. Wow. I, I didn't remember those guys playing in early July. Yeah. I, I don't know. Time time has been weird this summer. Yeah. But uh, like I said, uh, first game for Team Greece is a – uh, against Croatia on Friday at 9.50 a.m.? At 9.50 a.m. for every game except the Italy game on Saturday at 2.50 p.m. All on ESPN+. Plus. Yep. So we will uh, continue to watch these games, check in on the Greek national team. Uh, we'll probably do another podcast after the group stage. Yep. Um, but, yeah, uh, any other last parting thoughts here, Todd? No, I'm excited for more basketball. Uh, you know, Brewers won a series. Go subscribe to Cruising for they a Bruise as well. This is an well. important stretch. It, important it's a, stretch. It's a huge stretch. I think there's 30 some games left in the season. Brewers currently on the outside, looking in of the NL Wild Card and the NL Central, but still, still possible that they get in. That they have a lot of home games, a lot of games against bad teams, which has not been I great for the Brewers. But their next 15 games are against teams below 500. It's. Uh, I tweeted this before the Cubs series. It's up to them if they want to make the playoffs now. Because I obviously it's not literally in their hands, but take care of business often, and they'll have a pretty good shot to get in there. But you got to do it. So, um, but it's been nice for on the bad Brewers days, especially to get some distraction from that that team with uh, with the FIBA World Cup qualifiers and the friendlies and the Acropolis tournament, and looking forward to. More Giannis basketball, which, I mean, how can you not enjoy watching Giannis Antetokounmpo play basketball? Anthanasis. Anthanasis. And well, Tyler Dorsey. Hey, hey. No, the Greek, Greek team, like the Greek fans shout, like they shout louder for Thanasis than they do Giannis. They're, oh, yeah. they're my type of people. Oh, yeah. They're all about it. I mean, listen, that that heart, that energy, that, that translates everywhere. Game recognizes game. That's all I'll say. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> uh, but no, thank you for listening to this episode of the Eurostep here on the Eurostep Podcast Network. If you did enjoy, make sure you're subscribed to wherever you're listening to this or watching this on YouTube. Uh, make sure you leave a five-star rating on your podcast platform of choice, five stars. Leave a review if you want to. Uh, please do. Uh, make sure you check out Cruising for a Bruising, Talk of the Tundra, Make Time for This. GSPN is all over the place now. we got all major Wisconsin sports covered. And more. So uh, make sure you yep. check out all the GSPN feeds. Just everything you want. GSPN.info is where you'll find every single GSPN link that you could ever ask for in life. Uh, pod random. And we will talk to you next time.